Welcome once again to HeroQuest fans. First of all, shout out to Carl Casey at White Bat Audio for the music. And I want to welcome, as always, Darkhawk to our game tonight. Hi, welcome, Kurgan. Or thank you for having me. That's what I should say. <laughs> you can welcome me too. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, we, we haven't seen you in a while, and it's always good when you get to stop by. So yeah. before we get started with HeroQuest, with the Frozen Horror uh, Part 7 of <laughs> The Heart of Ice, which is a super long quest, as you know. It's a two-parter, and we're maybe getting close to the end of the first part, and then the second part will probably take us another couple months to finish. But um, there was there has been an announcement, and not in the world of HeroQuest, but let me get rid of my intermission screen here, in the world of HeroScape. And HeroScape is not a game that I played back in the day, but it is a game that I own now because Hasbro, through their HasLab crowdfunding campaign, which people informally call a Kickstarter, even though it's technically all through Hasbro, uh, that thing failed last year, and people were pretty disappointed. So let's see here. We're just going to get... Were, it. Did you, uh, out of curiosity, did you back it? I was going to, actually. <laughs> I was like this close because I was thinking like if uh, I was thinking here's what was my thought I was like if it just takes one more to like push it over the edge I'll do it but uh -huh. if not I mean it's not going to fund I'm not going to be charged it's you know doesn't really matter like I felt bad for the people that really wanted it because I thought uh -huh. it'd be kind of cool but then I realized oh I could just track down the classic game and get it because they were asking for 250 bucks it's like, eh, it's okay. a bit steep for a board game. I, my cutoff is like 200 But even then, I'd uh -huh. rather pay like 150 or 100 or sure. something. I mean, I understand if it's a vintage product and it's hard to find. But, yeah. How much was the uh, was HeroQuest when it, when it was doing the Hasbro, whatever it's called? Not Kickstarter, but... The... HasLab? HasLab, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there were two versions of it. There was the, the Heroic tier, which was 100 bucks. And then there was the Mythic tier, which was 150 And you basically had to pay uh, $30 shipping. Okay. That's considerably cheaper than 250 so... Yeah. That's yeah. a pretty... I mean, you've, I guess you've got to be a pretty... Uh, Hardcore. Big fan, yeah. So... Yeah. So you, you were able to track down, though, an original copy of HeroScape. Yes. How much was that if I if I ask compared to the two fifty? Yeah. So the guy that sold to me, I believe it was one seventy, like all things considered. And okay. The only thing wrong with it was one of the dragon wings, like he couldn't get it on there. Like he glued okay. one of them on, but he didn't glue the other one. Of course I was kinda glad he didn't glue it because it's like, oh, I can figure another way to attach it that's maybe not so destructive. Um, and then there was like the, I call them the candy trays that hold all the figures were not uh -huh. there. So he just had like cotton balls and like gotcha. baggies that he'd wrapped everything up, but it was like really great condition. I was like, wow. So yeah, I was like reading up on like how to play it and everything. It's, it's really similar to hero quest, except it's like squad based. So I guess it's not that different from having like a bunch of mercenaries, <laughs> uh, you know, and then you're. You're moving it now. There's two versions of the game where there's like the terrain. Mm -hmm. Like I think it's like the the advanced rules. The terrain actually matters in the like basic rules. It doesn't matter that much. So I I have yet to actually play it. But yeah. So anyway. But yeah, it, I, I became interested in it because of the whole <laughs> flop campaign. You know, because people were really passionate. You know, they're talking about it, and there's a big modding community and everything. Is the terrain uh, just your basic like high ground versus low ground and cover or partial cover or full cover or I, I think that's basically it. Yeah. And you move okay. oh yeah, you move slower when you move through water. So that's I think that's oh, okay. the basic rules. So yeah, if you wanna like get behind something, like shoot shoot at the guy and then go behind behind the cover. So is it more of like a war game? Where yeah, your your squad is going against some other squad or something. Right, right. Yeah. Gotcha. And, and I think it's the base game started out as just one army versus the other army, but you can play it where you could have multiple like squads like fighting each other, like multiple players vying for dominance. 
but yeah but the hex tiles the plastic hex tiles were the were the big deal like people would combine their sets together to have more hex tiles and build these big elaborate things but i guess as a kid you could get away with it by having you know you could like put books underneath it or something to like kind of boost it up make it sure. feel like it's taller but yeah it's like it combines the the kid you know fun of building uh just a big tower out of blocks and then fighting with little soldiers and dinosaurs and robots and stuff so anyway the big the big bombshell that that was quietly unleashed on the internet two days ago was this renegade game studios welcomes heroescape expanding licensing partnership with hasbro like what (laughs) so uh, this press release okay i'm just going to read it uh renegade game studios is excited to announce that they are finalizing expansion of their licensing relationship with hasbro a global leader in play to produce the best-selling HeroScape tabletop game. So right away, I'm thinking like, okay, finalizing. But then why would they say this if it wasn't pretty much a done deal? So anyway, originally proposed for relaunch in October 2022 by Avalon Hill on Hasbro Pulse's crowdfunding platform, HasLab, fans shared an outpouring of support for the game's revival. Now the organizations have come together to usher in the long-awaited return of HeroScape for the hobby, mass and specialty markets. That's key right there because it was going to be the crowdfunded game. And then they pretty much were saying, oh, yeah, and sometime later it's going to come to retail. But the fact that it's still going to be this way uh, is, is a good thing. So Renegade will also partner with Hasbro Pulse to make Heroescape available to as wide an audience as possible. Fans will get to experience classic elements of the game they love with all new content alongside the introduction of terrain packs, faction boxes, and more. Going forward, Renegade hopes to introduce new models and a variety of configurations and price points for both new and hardcore Heroescape players. I'm going to pause there because that was a big criticism. Um, What they were offering in in the crowdfunding campaign was it was this big huge package for $250. So there was it wasn't like HeroQuest where you could have like the smaller pack for less money. It's, it was just one big thing. And I think there were like five factions in the box instead of two. So it was already like bigger than the original version. And there was like mm-hmm. more fancy terrain. Like instead of just the original had like there was a couple of pieces of rubble, like broken walls. And then there was just the hex tiles. It was like stone, uh, grass and water. But this one had like plants and like little uh uh, pillars so that you could make like more structures and stuff. So it was really loaded. But the new version was going to, it was going to have all these uh, pieces, but they were just going to be like solid color instead of paint hand painted. And so a lot of people were mad about that. And actually there was a big uh, argument on, on the discord with lots of drama, which I missed not in our discord, but there's like HeroScape discords and HeroScape reddits out there where people were talking and some people were just like, okay, I want the game for 40 bucks and 71 miniatures and I want them all hand painted. And people were like, the only way they could ever do that would be to like use like slave labor, you know, child labor. It would have to be some crooked thing. And they were just like, yeah, it was a big, it was a big fight about that. So I think what they're saying here is it makes a little more sense. It's like, okay, we, the average person has no idea how much it costs to make a board game, like from concept right. to, to bring it to the store. But okay, if we get the general idea that it's really expensive, like they got to make the molds for the figurines and they got to like source everything, like all the printed stuff and deliver it and all that, all that stuff. And then come up with a price that they think people will pay. Cause they're not going to take a loss on it. Like right. a video game system. And yes, the whole hero scape thing is, it's different than Hero Quest, where you buy it and okay, yeah, maybe you buy an expansion, but the rest you just make up. With this, they would they would sell like packages, like oh, you want another faction? Here's another faction. You want some more uh, tiles? Here's some more tiles. You want you know some specialty figures? Here's some you know booster packs or whatever. And so it was very much more that I don't know if you can compare it to like Magic or whatever, but buy, 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 <laughs> collect, collect, collect. You know, impress your friends you know, crush your enemies kind of thing. And it was competitive. Like they would have tournaments and stuff. So it was a whole different ball game than like hero quest, which was more like here, let's have a fun little dungeon crawl adventure. And you know, maybe that's good enough. Uh, But, but here it seems like they're saying, okay, they're going to 
figure out how to have like because a lot of people already they've saved the, all their stuff from the 2000s because this was 2004 they haven't gotten rid of their stuff so they've already got like tons and tons of terrain and stuff but maybe people that are new are wanting you know to make make more stuff so they want more terrain or they just want a few figures or maybe they want a lot so i think that's the that's the right idea uh, HeroScape brought a lot of people into hobby gaming. To, to this day, there is a robust and passionate community. That's for sure. We look forward to growing that community and continuing to offer new and exciting models for gamers to enjoy, said Scott Gaeta, president and publisher of Renegade Game Studios. Additionally, we will be partnering with hobby stores to give HeroScape and its community of players the best home possible where they can make new friends and engage in exciting battles across Valhalla. Because that's the whole storyline. It's time travel and a big excuse for these factions to be fighting uh, in these mis mismatched battles. But yeah, it really is a war game. So I guess it'll have similar appeal to that kind of Warhammer mindset, except maybe not with uh, as much of the hobby part of it, because you're not building the stuff from scratch. Additionally, Renegade will provide online community and organized play support, including a future world championship. So get Fred Savage out of retirement. Let's make a movie about it, how they go across the country to yeah, <laughs> get to that championships. Uh, hobby stores can look forward to organizing play and point of purchase support at launch. I'm not sure what they mean by point of purchase support at launch. Is that just like day one patches? <laughs> I don't know. Do you have any thought on that? Point? I'm trying to think. Point of purchase point? support at launch. This is like when people said FLGS, and I'm like, what? <laughs> Friendly local game store. Oh, point of purchase support. Well, anyway. I don't know what that would mean. Yeah. Oh. Somebody in the chat answering it for us. Fans have been clamoring for a revival of HeroScape, and we've heard you. That's why we are tremendously excited to bring back and expand the beloved brand with the Renegade team, and we're big fans ourselves. Er, who are big fans themselves, says Bradley Bowman, licensing director of Global Toys and Sporting Goods at Hasbro. It's kind of like what toys in the world are not somehow controlled by Hasbro at this point. We're celebrating this return alongside our fans and look forward to offering existing players more ways to enjoy the game and inter introduce a whole new generation to HeroScape and its endless imaginative potential. HeroScapers can sign up for a HeroScape newsletter from Renegade to stay informed on the latest development of news. And yes, I did sign sign up for it. So I, I googled point of purchase. Um, that is a a term, I guess, where the uh, company making the products, in this case, Renegade Game Studios, would provide. They're talking about hobby stores, so they'd provide hobby stores with like some sort of like advertisement or something they can display to help educate customers on the game. Oh, um, in this case, and like basically entice customers to buy it. I so they're they're basically saying we're going to help hobby stores like promote the game inside their stores. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, because otherwise it's like you're like you go to the store and you're like, hey, do you have this game? And like, never heard of it. So <laughs> I know nothing. My, my uh, the the local game and hobby and comic store uh, near me, um, they'll get often uh, like the new uh, Star Wars Shatterpoint game. Have you heard about that? No. Oh, okay, yeah. so it's. Anyway. So Star Wars Shatterpoint is like, uh, so think of like Warhammer where you've got the sprues and the stuff you have to put together and paint. Mm -hmm. yep. But imagine it being Star Wars Clone War era uh, models with um, some pretty actually nice terrain. And then uh, one side controls uh, one team, so like a squad. Another side controls another squad and you play the game. Well, the this game comes out this month. It might already be out now, but uh, my local game store got a copy in early. They so that they could paint it, and then they were running a uh, like this weekend. They were doing like a demo play to like uh -huh. help educate people on the game. I'm wondering if Renegade will do the same thing. Like, hey, if you commit to buying so many copies of HeroScape, we'll give you a a comped copy for the store, and you can help you know yeah educate your your customers on how to play it and stuff because I, I think i told you this before i had never heard of heroescape um last year when the whole 
uh, HasLab thing came up. I never heard of the game. Like, it just never was on my radar, so. Yeah. I, I remember hearing about it, but I think at that point, I was I was just playing video games. I wasn't playing board games anymore. And yeah. So I just kind of, maybe I had a, a, just a hint that it was like, oh, that you want to buy booster packs. And I was like, nah, nah, it's not for me. Because I think when I when I was looking at Warhammer 40k, I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, this is a hobby for people with more money than I want to spend. <laughs> like, I don't want to do this because to be any good, you're going to have to buy all the stuff and commit to all the stuff. And that's just the perception. I realize that you can still enjoy the hobby without taking that path. I mean, that's certainly what they want you to do. But I mean, you, sure. could, you could enjoy, from what I understand, you could enjoy um, Heroescape just buying the master set just the, the core box and just play it. And if you really wanted to, you could just meet up with your friends and they could buy their fancy thing that they bought and bring it over. Unless it was so overpowered that you'd have no chance of winning and then you just wouldn't play with them. But, but I mean, they could yeah. bring it over and play and then take it home with them. Cause you're not going to play by yourself. So yeah, why not? It's like, is it something that. you said made me think like, isn't that interesting that you're right? Like years ago, I was playing video games too rather than board games um, yeah. because they were, I don't know, it was much more interesting and fun. And yet now we have better video games than we ever did before. Um, but board games are more interesting. <laughs> not not more interesting, but like board games are something that uh, are another uh, fun thing to do still. So I guess, I mean, board games have advanced tremendously since. Yeah, um, they haven't been completely shut out. People have kind of rediscovered them. Yeah. Yeah. Because you think about it like, okay, a game system is probably going to cost you like 500 bucks. Like, I remember back in the day, we would wait until they were like 100 and then, then get them. But it's like a board game for $100 seems like a lot. Like, it's, in my head, it still oh, yeah. seems like a lot of money. Like, dang. Oh, yeah. No, it should be like 50 bucks, maybe. Because you look at how cheap something like Monopoly tends to be. And you think about, okay, what does that have? Okay, it has a handful of metal tokens that are mass produced. And then yeah. it's a board, some oh, one pair of standard dice, a bunch of little plastic and bunch, hotels, and and a bunch know, of paper, and a bunch of paper. Yeah, so not that big a deal. So I guess these these other niche things are yeah they tend to be very expensive, but yeah it just looks so massive and so overwhelming that something like Hero Quest comes out and they've pretty much gotten to the point where, short of having it like on on you know your walmart store shelf it's it's just about as mainstream as it's probably going to get for a while but oh, at yeah. least it's there as opposed to just okay i walk into the warhammer store how the hell do i get started i have no idea like <laughs> you know it looks like i'm going to be spending hundreds of dollars and then i'm going to be spending hundreds of hours but i understand that that's that's what appeals to people because they're like oh i want to build the figures from scratch and then i want to create a bunch of terrain and i want to like meet up every week with random people and like challenge them to games and like that's that's the hobby for them that's the fun whereas what if you just want to sit down with your family and play a little bit hero quest monopoly hey jay sir i'm not i'm not ignoring you here um so we've got darkhawk playing are you going to be playing too jay sir or are you just uh, lurking right now because right now we don't have anybody else for hero quest i was just covering this uh Covering this news because I didn't get a chance to really do it last time. I was going to do this on the rant cast, but we ended up canceling. So about Renegade Game Studios. Renegade, this is the press release that we have. Renegade Game Studios was established in 2014. Okay, so pretty recent. By game industry veteran Scott Gaeta. Haven't heard of him. To publish games, they create memorable experiences, including a catalog full of award-winning titles. Renegade's catalog, cat catalog of games Includes numerous popular titles such as Power Rangers, Heroes of the Grid, I vaguely heard of that, G.I. Joe role-playing game, Transformers deck-building game, My Father's Work, and award-winning titles such as Raiders of the North Sea and The Fox in the Forest. Oh, cool. Thanks, Jacer. Yeah, so it'll be a little easier. <laughs> Find out more at renegadegames.com or by signing up for our newsletter here. It gives a link about Hasbro. We already know about Hasbro. Known for Play-Doh and Peppa Pig, of course. So, anyway, that's exciting news. I am curious what the uh, what the price point will be because yeah, 
you know, they'll have to, Hasbro is going to get a, uh, some percentage they've negotiated, yeah. which comes off, you know, uh, right. Renegades cost. I, I would assume I that they're going to go I, back to having like some kind of core set, but it'll probably, I just imagine yeah. like, it'll be just two factions again. So maybe like if they can cut the price point down from five factions to two, would that, be like yeah you know, 125 I mean, or something th this so these these models and kind of squad games so like the marvel has a game i, I forget the name of it um but marvel has a game where you do this um i already mentioned the star wars shatter point game and there's the the other star wars game uh that has models that like the ships i i don't play these games so do you know what i'm talking about uh, mm, I mean, I've seen some of these types of games. I, I was just going off on a tangent here. These, it's called I mean, uh, X-wing miniatures game. Oh yeah, yeah, I have seen that. So, um, never played it. And then there's, let's see, the the Marvel, the Marvel one is called uh, Marvel Crisis Protocol. Yeah, every so often I'll go into one of these game stores and I'll just like browse and just look around. And I mean, I don't pick up every box and look at it, but it's like, oh, okay, there's that property, that property, that property. The, but, those are the two games that I know, besides Warhammer, that are in the, the local game store that I go to. They're always stocked with tons of yeah different uh, figures and armies and everything like that. So I, I guess these games are fairly yeah. popular. I'm trying to find something here, and maybe you can help me remember what it is. But I thought Mattel was was gone, but apparently they sell these little like if you go to like a dollar store, you'll see they're these little metal miniatures uh -huh. of various licensed characters. Usually they're metal, sometimes they're plastic, but it'll either be like a big set that has like twelve, like the Transformers. There'll be like twelve Transformers, or it'll be like one uh, like Monsters Inc. character, and it's they're the exact right size and scale for HeroScape. And I've often wondered about that. Like, are they just, have they been building a secret army this whole time? Or is this just, because I know fans take that kind of stuff and then they just make up some stats for it and go, boom, there's your new faction right there. Like they've been doing that this whole time. Because they've got like little bases on them. But I can't remember what they're called. They're like Mattel minis or something mm. like that. Micro Mattel. Uh, Jacer says they already sell single promos for five to ten dollars, and four to five models at thirty-five to forty-five micro. Okay, so Jacer, they're called micro Mattel micros. It's like they're so ubiquitous. You think I would remember it? Mattel micro collection. Yeah, they are. Yeah, Dollar Tree. Okay, here we go. Here I've go. never, I've never seen this before. Okay, so boom, go to your local dollar store. I'm not saying you have to go to Dollar Tree, but um, yeah, like this. Look at these guys. These, this is obviously He-Man and Masters of the Universe, but that little base and that size is just perfect for uh, HeroScape. So huh. if you were a home brewer, boom, you don't have to create anything. It's all out there already. You want uh, Kung Fu Panda? Boom, got you covered. Wait, what is the quantity here? Quantity? 20, 24. Oh, like you got to buy them in bulk? Well, is it 24 figures or it just comes with these five figures times 24? Dollar twenty-five each. I think, it's, I think it's dollar twenty-five per figure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay, so you buy you buy a pack of twenty four, and there are they blind boxes or blind bags? Maybe I don't know. I've never tried to buy anything from a dollar store online. It seems <laughs> it's totally wrong to me. I feel like we should buy. Uh, we should buy some of these now. 
Well, I'm surprised there's only those three. Like, I've seen so many others. Like, name oh, any, see any cartoon. They've got Pixar. Uh, I'm, I'm looking. They've got DC Comics, Incredibles, yep. Jurassic World. Wow. I did not know about these. Yeah. Well, the ones I always think of are Transformers and, like, DC superheroes, Marvel superheroes. Justice League, X Men, yeah, Disney and Pixar. So yeah, it could be pretty much anything. I mean, if I saw a Star Wars set, it would be hard for me to turn it down. Even though, yeah, I guess I would be playing it in. I mean, the paint jobs on them aren't that great. Like the ones I've seen. I mean, they're just what? kind of basic. Yeah, they're dollar twenty five. Yeah, they're dollar twenty five. Dollar twenty five. That is the, that is the mount, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're not going to go there. Okay, Heroclix. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I think they were sold alongside, like, they'd be on the same shelf next to Heroclix. And I still oh. see those, where it's the the little figurine, but then the base has a little dial on it, which I always thought, oh, that'd be cool to track the body points for each character. But with HeroQuest, I mean, it'd be kind of silly, because there's only a few characters would really use it. And what would you do? Would you, like, <laughs> magnets, or you'd, like, you know, stick it on there with putty or something but yeah blind bags yeah see i don't go for all that stuff i mean if i were a kid and like my allowance money was going towards one like toy thing i mean maybe but yeah it just seems like a lot of shenanigans i'm not, I'm not into that <laughs> i'd be like trying to talk my kids out of it be like listen <laughs> this is not the way <laughs> you go to the dollar store <laughs> get the stuff you get out your pen and paper and you make it up. Okay, so someone did respond here on the forums to this new thread I started. Renegade produces a lot of IP-related games, especially deck builders and even a few RPGs. This is Kordak, by the way. Thank you for the contribution. Most of which leans heavily into IPs like G.I. Joe and Transformers, licensees that Hasbro has anyway, so this could make some sense. So yeah, then there's the question, like, why would Hasbro bother to release, like, a Transformers set when people just, and until the ones at the dollar store sell out, and it's like, okay, fine, here's the official HeroScape thing. Their games can be hit or miss, and can also land heavily in the mass market game design approach and marketing, but that's kind of what HeroScape was to begin with. Nothing wrong with that. Ideally, they'll be able to produce what Hasbro already prepped, not have to start from scratch. But by and large, Renegade has fairly been fairly successful with the properties as I've seen so far. So he's not a huge fan. I mean, basically here, Hasbro has shifted the risk of uh, producing this and taking a gamble on this to another company. So sure, because otherwise, they if they thought it was a slam dunk, they would have done it themselves. Right. Yeah, it, it's it seems kind of iffy. Like they're not. 100% yeah on board but we'll see what happens. I mean for all the for the sake of all the Heroscape fans out there who wanted something new, I mean I hope it, it happens, I hope it works out. Would I be buying it? Probably not just because I already have it. Like that was my that was that was your chance to get me <laughs> was uh you know, if it had come out and it'd been maybe not $250 in retail, maybe I'd be buying it. But since I knew it failed, I just well, let me just find the, the, the game that started it all, and I'll get that, and that'll be mine. You know, I wonder if they did the 250 as the only option, because uh, you said or the Mythic tier was 200 you said? for the 150 and that oh, was 150. where you got the game system, Keller's Keep, Return of the Witch Lord, which you got with, or the Heroic tier, you just got the game system, plus five bonus figures. Um. But the, the Mythic tier, you had some expansions, basically. Yeah, yeah you got all the stretch goals in, in its well, own box, and you got, yeah, the two expansions. What I was going to say was for one maybe when they looked at the orders, the vast majority of people went with the Mythic tier. So and so then tier. when they did the Hero Escape, they thought, well, rather than have two tiers, let's just go for the bigger yeah. one. But 250 is, is a lot more than they could chew yeah and well the yeah. other thing was the stretch goals were like very ambitious like the amount of money they were asking for so i think for hero quest it was like a million dollars and for hero escape it was like 1.9 million 
I think is what that came out to be in the end to, to be funded. So it was, quite a bit, and the stretch goals were like, yeah, like another 15,000 or something beyond that. Then you'd get like two figures that were like mm. big, like big monsters. I mean, costs could have gone up a lot. Yeah. More since when they did the hero escape yeah, and the or hero quest. The yeah. yeah. Chains. There was a big problem. Yeah. Cause they were, they were getting all their plastics from China. I know that much for a fact. And the printed stuff says China on it too. So it's like, okay, well, there's probably some issues there. I know that they demoed the, the hero escape age of annihilation and they had like, you could tell they were 3d printed. Like if you looked closely, you could see sure. that they were 3d printed. Um, and the, the, the hex tiles and terrain they were using were from the original game, so no problem mm. there. Um, and the dice too. But some there was some talk. There were some actually some early interviews, which I think you can still find. Like Patrick, I always forget his last name, and then Chris Nato from Avalon Hill Hasbro Gaming. Uh, they were talking about like the costs involved, and one of the things that people figured out was, oh, they have to get these molds for the for the miniatures. Mm -hmm. and it was like you know for the injection molding plastics um they can either do them in aluminum mm -hmm. and they're only good for like so many passes or so many pressings yep. or whatever and then or they can get much more expensive uh steel ones which are much longer lasting and it was like the price point between those was like vastly different so i want to say like one was like like seven hundred fifty thousand versus 250,000. I could be totally wrong in that. I'm just like, these are half remembered things that I remember reading. So I could be totally wrong and it could be different now, but, but I wasn't sure if with, with that, if they had made any headway in that at all, like, did they just have 3d models of these and nothing more, or had they actually started creating the molds and, and infrastructure infrastructure to create these. So they might not have. So if that's the case, sure they spent time designing all these models why wouldn't they use some of them but we don't know that for sure we don't know for sure that they would take any of the material that they displayed previously like this might be completely different on the other hand yeah if, if it were me running the company i'd be like well unless everyone hated these designs i'm just gonna use them like <laughs> just bring them forward maybe tweak them a little bit and and go forward yeah, it wouldn't surprise me though if they didn't have the original um, uh, molds. Yeah. For, oh, from the the two thousand and four game. Yeah. Who knows what happened to those? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Because on the one hand, yes, you you people who are brand new to the game, it would be cool to just give them a reprint. But I mean, we didn't get that with Hero Quest. Like, we didn't get. Of course they were game games workshop like they would have had to get them on board and probably license those designs so instead they just made their own designs but people that already own the game that are hardcore like i'm i'm assuming though they're 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 casting their net wide they want to appeal to anybody that might be interested in learning how to play a war game and giving them an easy way to do that so not just people that already own everything heroescape already and you know wouldn't buy the same thing all over again but well one of the things in the early interviews they did mention was the fact that it's kind of like hero escape kind of goes back to the beginning of war games in a sense that these are generic characters so here's some army men here's a dinosaur here's a little you know knight here's a robot like these are really generic characters whereas if you start getting into like yeah these licensed ips you know kind of like lego like okay the the patent runs out and everybody's copied your stuff, but you're the only ones that have the Harry Potter license or you're the only ones who have the whatever. Um, so you could just keep doing that. But they were trying to design like unique characters that they could tie to the product and to Hasbro. Huh. So I, yeah, I, I put in the uh, weird character discord chat, a, uh, a video I'd watched several weeks ago um, on how plastic models like on sprues are made oh, um, like it's like a tour of the factory and they go with like in the the how they make the molds and stuff and they talk about how expensive each mold is wow see if and how how they only last like yeah so long and stuff so like everything you were saying before so 
Oh, interesting. Yeah, so it's not just that the company is greedy. It's just that, yeah. It no, it, it sounds like there's a ton of time and prep. And in the case of, I imagine there's something similar here with, uh, with uh, miniature figures, but like with the sprues, um, they have to like design it so that the the plastic evenly injects in so it like fills the cavity like perfectly um so i i it's it sounds like it's not like a straightforward process like where you just like you know mold something in like a 3d modeling program and then spit out the aluminum mold and you're good like there's a bunch of stuff oh, okay. that uh yeah, I guess yeah. I, I never really knew how it was done. But yeah, if, if Mr. Rogers' neighborhood was still around, he'd be That's like, true. a tour of the of the uh Warhammer factory or whatever. I uh speaking of Mr. Rogers, that how crayons are made, I remember that so clearly. I mean it's of course it's on YouTube now too, but Yeah, such a classic. Yeah, I've showed that, that to my yeah. niece and nephew. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. And there were other ones too, but yeah, that was that was the one. I remember there was one where uh, uh, the kids playing Donkey Kong and like the operators like taking out the quarters and he's like, oh yeah, I'll just show you what the circuit board looks like and he, like here's what the underside of the joystick looks like and yeah, there was just. Oh stuff wow, like that. I I've not seen that one. I'll have to look that one up. Yeah, Donkey Kong. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, you wonder about stuff like that. Gives you a better appreciation. Okay, so Jacer says I bought the Hobbit. Hero clicks blind boxes at 99 cents, extra dwarfs and orcs. Yeah, I think I saw those on the uh, Hero um, Hero Quest fans Discord in the painting section, which is probably like the most active section. Um, lots of cool stuff there. Well, I think if if I had a couple of those dials, I mean, I have a lot of that poster tack, like that um, blue tack, you know, sticky putty poster putty. You can stick. Uh, some you know plastic to plastic pretty easily for like a temporary thing if i had a couple of those dials i could use them for some of the big monsters but yeah it's just a preference thing it's either that or you stack the stack the skull tiles or you could have like a little uh, body point tracker but anyway so that's uh that's the heroscape thing so i would just say good luck to renegade games and hasbro hopefully they'll give the fans what they want this time and actually follow through and it'll be a success uh, for their sake and who knows maybe down the line i might uh might get involved with it hopefully they don't do something stupid like say oh yeah the old uh the old game components they're not allowed in tournaments <laughs> like i'd be like okay that's that's probably going to be a wrong move and be perceived as as greedy greedy all right so Let's transition back over to HeroQuest.